You are not listening to this message by chance or mistake, but by the grace of God. We preach the gospel to the masses and help gear up everyone with the word of truth, the Bible. Please stay tuned and I pray the grace of God fall upon you as you listen. Amen. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day. This is GRM, Gospel Revelation Ministry. Welcome to Gospel Revelation Ministry this Monday, 22nd of August. We focus on spreading the Word of God, addressing worldly topics biblically. You can learn more about this ministry at grministry.org. I am your host, Yinka Martins, and this ministry's pastor is Pastor Joshua at Jewale. Good day, brethren. Today we want to silence the voices of our enemy. The reading passage today is 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 4 to 19. So Herab went into his house, selling and displeased because of the word which Nabot the Jerry's light has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel's wife came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen that you'll eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Nabat the Jerry's light and said to him, Give me your viand for money or else. If it please you, I will give you another viand for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Nabal the Jerry's light. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with a seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Nabal. She wrote in the letter, saying, Proclaim a fast. And sit Naba with high honors among the people, and sit two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him, that he might die. So the men of the city, the elders, and the nobles who were inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had sent to them. As it was written in the letter which he had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast, and sit at Naba with high honors among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones, so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth has been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Nabal the Jerry's light, which he refused to give you for money, for Nabal is not alive but dead. So he was, when he had to hear that Nabal was dead, that Ahab got up and went to take possession of the vineyard of Nabal the Jerry's light. Then the word of the Lord came to light at the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab the king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is, in the vineyard of Nabal where he has gone down to take possession of it. You should speak to him, saying, There says the Lord, Have you muttered and also taken possession? And you should speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, And the place where the dog licked the blood of Nabert's, dog shall lick your blood, even yours. Again, the topic today, silencing the voices of our enemy. Nabot, in the passage that we read, was tending his father's and grandfather's land, and Ahab had interest in his garden. He wanted to take it from him. But Naboth said, I don't want to send my inheritance. 
he insisted that he doesn't want to sell his heritage. He had what he stopped. His wife, Jezebel, saw that he was disturbed. And he assured Ahab not to worry that he will get that garden. Anytime I read this passage, I become emotional because something like that did happen to me. What Jezebel did is to raise two accusers to accuse Nabal that he has blaspheming God as blaspheming the king. And they stoned Naboth to death for no just cause. Naboth was stoned to death because Jezebel raised two false accusers against him. In our life, people are like that. Wickedness prevails in every place, among the family, among friends, among even household. You don't need to offend somebody to hate you. Nabot did not do anything to Ahab or Jezebel. And still, because of greediness, because of abuse of power, they kill him. And that is why in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus Christ was talking about devil. He said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he assures us that have come, that we may have life, and that life abundantly. So, devil and his, and his demons using people to destroy others. There are many things like that. If we look at the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 5 to 9, Pharaoh, although gave Israel permission to leave, but he regretted it. Now he wants to avenge on them. He wants to go and wipe them out. He pursued them to the Red Sea. And because they were backed by God, the army were destroyed in the Red Sea. Same thing in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 19, verse 12 to 16. Now, these people see the, what God is doing concerning the ministry of the apostle, especially Paul. So that his handkerchief are healing people, people are being healed, the spirit is being sent out. Some of the Jewish exorcists took upon themselves to call them the name of Jesus. They want to mimic the apostle, the Jewish exorcists, they want to mimic the apostle, and they want to be casting out evil spirit from people. But in verse 15, the evil spirit and son said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, and who are you? Silence the voices of the enemy. They want to take appearance of godliness to start and commercialize the spirit of God. But we were told that the evil spirit tear them apart. So God silenced their voices. You can silence the voices of evil by the word of God. We can silence the voices of evil by our righteousness. We can silence the voices of evil by our holiness. We can silence the voices of the people by uh, the word of God. And that is why in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, take a helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers on this line, I want you to equip yourself with the word of God. You don't need to know all the verses. If you can memorize two or three Psalms and you know them, can work powerfully for you. My mother was illiterate, but he knows some Psalm. Psalm 23, Psalm 121, Psalm 91. 
and all like that. And my mother was a prayer warrior in one of the biggest church in our country. She was able to tell me two months before he died that the death is coming. The word of God is very powerful. The word of God is the one that makes us. You see, when you see all those voodoo worshippers, hiders worshippers, they have their own incantation. We too must have incantation from the Bible, the word of God. It must dwell richly with us. That's the book of Colossians. And if they were say the word of God must dwell richly with you, let the word of God dwell richly with you. Let the word of God dwell richly with me so that we can use it again to silence the voices of the enemy. That was the day I was having a dream. It was a very powerful dream. And I will summarize the dream. It was a long dream. So I was going, I was doing like evangelism in that dream. Then I came to this woman. And this woman started to do evil incantation against me. And it was doing incantation, it was doing incantation, it was doing incantation. And everybody gathered to see what was going to happen. And at that moment, in that vision, I started to speak the word of God. Book of John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And I said in the beginning, it was the word. And the word was with God. And nothing was done without the word. Without it, nothing was made. And it is the light of the word. And when the light comes, when I said when the light comes, before I say darkness, I just saw fire consume that person. Then I said, when the light comes, fire just consumed the person. And that was the end of, of that dream. The word of God. Let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let us maintain the word of God. Anytime we are in any situation to silence the voices of the enemy, we need the word of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus Christ used the word of God to silence the voices of the devil three times. He used the word of God to defeat the devil. So let the word of God dwell with us richly and let us know how to use. Let us meditate on the word. Let us practice daily meditation upon the word of God. Finally, in the book of Psalm 93, Verse 3 and 4. The flood have lifted up his voices. The voice of the lifted up their waves. But verse 4 says, But our God is mightier than the noises of many waters. Our God is mightier than the waves of the sea. Lord, I pray for you today that God will empower you. God will empower me. God will empower us to be able to withstand, to silence every voices of enemy in our life, over our children, over our job, over our ministry, over our household. Every voices of enemy is silenced today by the power and the blood of Jesus. I silence every voices of the enemy over you, over your family, over your household. The book of Micah chapter 7 verse 8 say, Do not rejoice me, my enemy. Say, when I fall, I will rise again. When I'm in darkness, the light of God will be all to me. Lord, the enemy will not rejoice over you. You will rejoice over your enemy. The enemy will not rejoice over your family. Oh, Lord, they will not rejoice over your ministry. I raise your head above your enemy. It is well with you. It is well with your household ability, this power, the strength to silence every voices of enemy in our life, in our home, spiritually, physically. Lord, I pray unto you, spiritually, you will dominate your enemy in the spiritual realm. Physically, God will empower you to dominate your enemy. In the book of Psalm 18, 
from verse 41, 42, 43. And David said, you sent my hand to make war well, that my hand can bend a sword. Lord, I pray that power, power to dominate our enemy. Give it to you. Give it to me. Give it to us. Let the grace of God continually be sufficient for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to what Prophet Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It's a prince of peace. If you have not had an encounter with the prince of peace, this is time to give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ by confessing your sin and by accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and your Savior and you shall be saved. And then you need to be baptized and then receive Holy Spirit. Make sure you talk to your pastor and you'll be baptized. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to learn more about this ministry, please visit grministry.org or call us on plus one six one seven four four nine zero six four six. To support this ministry, you can subscribe and follow our channel or give at grministry.org support. Stay blessed.